Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar tonight, Digital, Digital Health Tools for Specialists. My name is Jenny Pearson. I'm an Education Officer for the Primary Health Network. Before we do go any further, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're meeting on tonight and pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. I'm coming to you from Enawan land, um, from Armadale on the Northern Tablelands. Uh, we have uh, four presenters for you tonight. We have Dr. Cecily Forsyth, who's a clinical haematologist. We have Kathy Rainbird, who's the Education Manager for the Australian Digital Health Agency. And we have Hannah Beamish from the Primary Health Network, and she is our Digital Health Project Lead. Um, at the end of the webinar, a, an evaluation will pop up. I encourage you to fill it in. It will only take about 30 seconds. Um, and if you can all have your microphones on mute, that would be great. Uh, in GoToWebinar, you don't have the ability um, to put your camera on. But if you want to type in a question, please uh, just type it into the question box and we will um, answer any questions that we can at the end of the webinar. All right, um, I'll hand over to you, Kathy. Thanks so much. Um, I just need to be given permission to share my slides. All right, can I just confirm that you can see my slides? We yes, can, we thanks, can. Kathy. Yes, we can. Lovely, see. thank you. That's great. Um, so yes, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Kathy Rainbird, and as Jenny mentioned, I am here to talk to you about one of the key digital health tools that the Digital Health Agency has been rolling out across the country, which is My Health Record, um, and in particular highlight how hopefully it can help save you and your practice time and ultimately improve patient outcomes. Before I go any further, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community. I'm speaking to you today from Manang Pipilum country, which is part of the Noongar Nation. Um, I pay res my respects to them and their cultures and to elders and welcome any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who might be joining us today. I'm going to give you a quick overview of my health record um, just as background and uh, then give you a bit of a demo of what you can find and the key documents that are available for you to make your, hopefully make your clinical practice faster and more streamlined. Um, but the key thing to point out on this slide is that it doesn't replace your existing medical records or your systems. Um, it gives you a complementary source of additional information so it doesn't replace how you communicate with your requesters or people who've sent a referral to you. Um, it's, it's really just an additional way that you can find extra information. And it's not a complete record either. It doesn't include absolutely everything from all the different parts of the healthcare sectors, but a summary of that information, hopefully the key information that might make it easier for you to provide better care to your patients. It is personally controlled in that an individual gets a say in whether they have a My Health record at all, um, and they can uh, put controls in place over it in terms of putting codes over it if they have any concerns about who might see it. But it is only accessible to the person themselves, the individual, and people who are directly involved in their healthcare who are working in an authorised um, organisation. So an organisation such as your private practice has to actually register to get connected to the system to my health record and only those organisations that have gone through those steps and then authorised their, their staff or team members are able to use it. So it's there to support better healthcare and it's really been designed because as we know in Australia so many of the different uh, computer systems that we use don't necessarily talk to each other and there's a great uh, division or siloing between private and um, public private and public sector parts of the healthcare system, different specialty groups even, um, and of course the inter-intrastate borders. Um, so 
My Health Record, the beauty of it, one of the beauties of it is that it is a national system. It helps overcome some of those fragmentations. And so it's one place where that key information can be stored securely online and then accessed when and where it's needed as long as you've got connection to the internet, available 24 seven. And it might mean that if one of your patients ends up say in an emergency, they can access that information quickly and easily. There are a number of uh, security processes and, and functions that underpin the system. In particular, software products have to go through quite stringent technical requirements to be able to actually interact with my health record including having uh, digital security certificates that work in the background to encrypt the information so it can't be intercepted and used inappropriately um, there is also legislation that covers the use of the system and so on so there's quite strong protections in place just by way of background uh, I think most of you would have heard that there was a process of people being able to choose whether or not to have a My Health record. Most people in Australia have one. A few people did choose to opt out initially, but after that change went through, I think they were sitting on the fence for a little bit and they've been steadily actually opting back into the system. Um, so you can see that most people across the country have one. So most people coming into your practice, I think it's over 90% of people will have one. and with all of the interaction that people have been recently having with the healthcare system, particularly due to COVID, um, most of their My Health records actually now have clinical information in them. I think initially when it sort of started out, a lot of records were a bit like an empty folder and it wasn't until people sort of interact with the healthcare system that that information would build up in it. But now you will find more and more with some useful information in there. So it makes it worth while having a look and, and seeing what you can find. And I think Cecily will talk about some of the examples of what she finds really useful in the system. And just to highlight, these are some stats from uh, February this year. This is that in the at the national level, there's over 366 million clinical documents that have been uploaded into the system. And the agency's working across all different parts of the healthcare system to get connections and more information uploaded. There is a lot of medicine information also contained in my health record and consumers can actually enter personal health information, um, which leads me to another point just to point out that that is always clearly indicated as patient entered information when you look at a person's my health record and they can't go and alter or change a document that's been uploaded by a healthcare professional or health organisation. Um, they can't go in and edit and change anything. It's like a locked PDF once it's been uploaded. This is just to highlight some of that connectivity that's already happening across the systems and sectors. Um, we've been working closely with PHNs, like at a Hunter New England PHN, um, to encourage primary care initially to get connected. So most GPs across the, the um, country have connected up and registered to use and are now starting to upload more information. Not all of them all all are all of the time, um, but hopefully we'll see more of the, that information being uploaded from that end. There's also been a lot of connection with pharmacy now, especially in relation to My Health Record and electronic prescribing. Um, and so dispense information is, is starting to really flow into the system. We've also been working with state jurisdictions to get public hospitals connected so that they're able to upload their discharge summaries and starting to upload some specialist letters from their outpatient clinics. Uh, we're also working with private hospitals, pathology labs, diagnostic imaging services and a whole range of other sectors. Um, and specialists, which is why you're here today. Um, we're working with the specialist sector in particular at the moment because we have, uh, the agencies actually had a industry offer out with the specialist software vendors to make their products integrate and work seamlessly with My Health Record to make it easier to fit into your workflow. Um, and since that's been underway, we've also now been encouraging specialists to get connected and start using the system. So um, that's part of the reason for this webinar this evening. Um, and we would encourage you to think about doing that after you see this evening's presentation and hopefully see how it could benefit your practice.
Um, in terms of the flow on effect, the great news is, is that the documents that are being uploaded are also being viewed and used across the system. And when we look at some of the stats from the public hospitals, they're really picking up their viewing of information and finding it really invaluable, especially in the ED settings. Um, to have that information directly to hand is, is fantastic. And, and you can see the stats just continuing to rise for those groups. Um, and this is just pointing out how there's been an increase in the amount of con clinical content over time. In particular, you can see the, the great increase in pathology reports, which was again prompted by COVID. Um, and also the increase that you can see in those dispense records, um, specialist letters starting to grow, which looks very small compared to the other graphs. But as I said, that's because we're still getting those connections with the software um, and also still work being done in the diagnostic imaging space. But it is still coming um, and there is more and more in there that makes it worth you having a look. So in terms of the sorts of information that you can find in a person's My Health record, and this is at the moment. Um, the agency is also working on other types of documents being able to be added to My Health Record and uploaded from different parts of the sectors as well. But at the moment, these are the ones that you may be able to find in a person's record. So on the right are the documents that are uploaded by healthcare providers or healthcare organisations, such as the discharge summaries from hospitals. The shared health summary is a really good one to be aware of. That's usually uploaded by the person's main regular healthcare provider. So in most cases, that would be their GP. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a little while, but basically it captures from their software systems, it captures the um, allergies, adverse reactions, current medications, past medical history and conditions, and the immunizations that they might've had at that particular practice. So it can be a really useful source of information. The rest of those documents are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go through all of those, conscious of the time as well. Um, but just also to point out that, as I said, consumers can add information in the form of a health summary. Um, and they can also add, if they have gone through the process of preparing an advanced care plan or advanced health directive, they can upload a copy of that to their My Health Record, so making it available wherever they go. We also have information that's fed through from Services Australia or Medicare related documents um, and they can be quite useful. Um, I was just talking to Cecily before we started the presentation tonight about being able to look up the previous claims information and see what other healthcare providers have been involved in that person's care it can be really useful. Um, and also the fact that we have the link to the Australian Immunisation Register so you can quickly check um, whether someone's up to date, in particular with their COVID-19 vaccines. Um, and in the middle here, you can see we've got some uh, circles with some overview documents, which actually is uh, their system generated views of the information that's dispersed across persons, my health record. And they're designed to make it quick and easy for you to locate what you need um, and hopefully make your life simpler in finding that information. Because you can imagine, say for medicines, there could be medicines information in quite a few of these different documents. And previously you'd have to go through each one and sort of piece it together. Now we have what's called the medicines information view and it brings it all onto one screen so you can quickly and easily find that. Um, there's also overviews for a couple of other things, the Medicare overview, pathology and diagnostic imaging overviews, which group tests together makes it easy to click on the link and just get to those, and an immunisation consolidated view, which includes information from both the immunisation register and shared health summaries. Um, so I'm hoping that I can jump out of my slides now and cross to my simulated version of my health record. We have a software simulator here. I've already opened it up to make um, it easier to show you this evening, but this is a simulation. We've got a various, all of those documents that I just mentioned are able to be seen across um, my health record if you're connected and if your software has got it all set up, um, you do have to go through a bit of a configuration process with your software and um, the way it then displays in your software 
varies from product to product. So this is just an example of one product. This is Genie. Um, they've got a little button here. And in some instances, it opens up as a separate screen and tab. But in this version of Genie, there's actually a, a tab within the clinical system. And then you click on the view document list and it pulls the documents in. And because this is my simulated version and my fictitious patient, it might take a little while to uh, download that list, um, but it won't take as long at your end. Um, and I was talking again before with Cecily and she uses a different software product and says that it integrates really smoothly and um, works really well for her. So I'll let her talk to that when it comes to her presentation. Hopefully this doesn't take too long to load. Here we are. Um, so now we have clicked on the view document list. We've got this list of documents available in this person's My Health record. And as I mentioned, um, useful to think about what's what you want to be able to find quickly and easily. Um, and I think that medicines view that I mentioned before, that overview of that medicines information can be really useful, um, especially if you want to get a quick picture of that person's um, medicines, but also their allergies and adverse reactions. And it also has quick links to some of the other key documents that are held in the My Health record. So here it is. Um, so this is the standard look of a lot of the documents. They have this banner at the top talking uh, about which patient it's for um, and the available information. So this is the available medicines in this person's My Health record. This section along here is a navigation panel and you can see the first thing that appears is the allergies and adverse reactions and that's in pink and that's reflected underneath with this pink border just to highlight that that's what you're viewing. Then you can see the substance or agent that, the, that, that they have that allergy to and the manifestation. And there are the source documents that that information has come from with hyperlinks. So you can actually click on those and go to those documents if you want to find out more. So straight away, you can see some information that you may not have had otherwise um, straight by clicking through this link. I'm going to the medicines preview where you're going to have more information. This is listing the medications by um, descending date order. And you can see some information that's come from dispense records um, and other documents underneath the medicine by brand, dose and directions. And you can also sort that list by clicking on the hyperlink to sort for um, active ingredient. The handy thing about this medicines view as well is it gives you a link to the most recent shared health summary if that GP has uploaded one. Um, and it tells you how old that is. So you can quickly click on that. I'll do that now. And it gives you some of that information that we'd seen in that overview document already. But further down, we can see some medical history. And if you perhaps were seeing this patient with an old referral or a referral that was out of date, um, it might give you some really useful information there to be able to see that shared health summary. Just navigating out of that. Um, the other document that has that hyperlink in that medicines view as well is uh, linked to the most recent discharge summary. So if you had a referral and the patient had then been admitted to hospital in between the referral and um, you seeing them, you would be able to see what had happened in that discharge summary as well. Uh, this is just an example of the pathology reports overview. Again, this brings together all the reports onto one screen, groups them. This is grouping them by test name and um, date. Um, so you can just get to those tests and potentially that might save you having to reorder a test if the person might have already had a blood test done recently or you want to compare um, and you can just click on the link, click open and you've got those results in front of you straight away without having to request or chase them. Um, so it can be a real time saver in terms of quickly and easily getting to that information. Um, so I 
that's just a real snapshot of some of the key things that you can find. As I mentioned, that Medicare overview is really useful if you want to see which other healthcare providers have been involved in um, that person's care. And then there are the individual documents underneath that you can search for. You can usually filter by certain document types if you're looking for a specific type of document. And you can save a copy of those documents to your local record as well if you want to have them for future reference. So that's a very, very quick snapshot, but just to give you a taste of the sorts of things that you can find um, through using My Health Record and hopefully uh, highlights how it might be really useful in terms of saving time, collating that information. Um, the other really important thing that you can now do in, through most of the software products is upload your specialist letters, um, which is really invaluable for when the patient goes elsewhere in the healthcare settings. Uh, make sure that your key information is then able to be used in making those future healthcare decisions for them. Um, I should mention in terms of the diagnostic imaging and pathology results, it is dependent on those labs being connected to upload their um, information and not all of them are yet. We are working closely with the sectors to try and get more connections. Um, but if you want to check whether your local labs are connected, you can click on this hyperlink here. And I will also point out that some of the labs require e-requests, so they don't all automatically upload all reports. Um, sometimes they need something else done, so that's mentioned at the bottom of that web page as well. So in terms of the benefits to you and your practice, it's really about giving you quick and easy access to key health information that you may not have already received um, and saving you time, saving perhaps having to send someone away and, and gather that information before you can have a consultation or have the patient even have to come back for another consultation because you didn't have all the information needed. And of course, that reduces the burden on your practice staff in terms of spending time chasing that information. I know sometimes it can take many hours to track down some of that information. Instead, they might be able to find it immediately through clicking into the person's My Health Record. And also saving time sort of costs associated with sending letters to other healthcare providers. I should point out that you still need to send your letters through your usual process back to your referrers. Um, but the, if you get a request from elsewhere for a copy of that letter, you can point them to look at the person's My Health Record instead of you having to send off another copy to that other, other um, place that's requested it. And of course, ultimately, it's about improving clinical decision making by giving you access to that patient specific information at the time at the point of care um, and avoiding those duplications of tests and scans and so on. So very quickly, how do you make it work in your practice? And I'll make this very quick. You will get a copy of the slides, so don't worry about writing it all down or um, copying any links. We will have the, the links in all of these slides work. Um, in terms of accessing, if you're using a software product that is connected to My Health Record, then that makes it easy. Like I showed, there's just a button and you click and you'll be into the, that information. We have a register of conformity. They're the ones that have gone through that um, integration with My Health Record and are able to give you access to the information that's hyperlinked on this slide. If your software doesn't yet connect to the system, there is another option and that's through what we call the National Provider Portal. That's a view only service, so you can't upload information through there, but you can at least see the person's My Health Record and see all of that information that I just showed you in the demo. As I said, we're working with the specialist software vendors. Um, the ones on the right hand side of this slide have all integrated. There are other products that have already um, progressed with having that integration and have got it available through their systems. As, um, Cecily mentioned Audit4 is one of those, um, but these ones have added recently new functionality to integrate and make the uploading of letters particularly easy. Um, and the ones listed on the left are working towards that, so they're either in beta testing or building and testing. And as I said, this will enable you to see all of that information, upload a copy of your letters and upload a copy of your scripts when you write them. 
In terms of what you need to do, if you are in private practice, you do, if you're running the practice, you need to, your practice needs to have a My Health Record security and access policy in place. And there are templates to support your practice in doing that, available through that link that's on that slide. Um, you do need to register your organisation and set up the access, so get your software set up. You'll have to put certain identifiers in the background. Um, so you spoke, Again, there's a link here that will guide you through that process. We also have a connections team that can support you and help um, guide you through that, those steps. You need to train your staff. We have training resources available on our website as well and our team is available to support that. Um, and you need to think about who in your organisation is going to be accessed and how you'll authorise that access and make sure you're meeting your ongoing participation obligations and making sure you're keeping track of security, um, deactivating people's accounts and so on. So to get connected, so I'm just getting a bit of background noise, I don't know if someone's in the background there. Um, to get connected and start using, I encourage you to visit our website or contact the agency's helpline and our connections team or contact the local PHN staff and they can help support you as well. If you are working in a hospital setting, most hospitals are already connected and able to use my health record, so ask your clinical informatics manager or your quality manager or check your local intranet and find out how you can access in your hospital. We have a lot of resources to support you if you're interested in finding out more. We have some great e-learning modules including ones on cyber security and privacy and access and so on. We have software summary sheets which show you step-by-step -step instructions in the software products, how to access and use some of that information. Um, and we do even have a YouTube channel if you're so inclined. Um, I'll stop there and hand over to Cecily first, probably before we take questions, but um, just quickly to mention also uh, coming to you soon or coming to a mobile device through your patients soon um, is what we have recently re released at the agency is a new app called the My Health app, which allows individuals or patients to access their My Health Record information through this app. Um, so they can download it onto their mobile phone. It gives them easier access to their information and means that they can look up um, the key information that's available in their My Health Record and use it. So they may well come into your practice and say, oh, I can't remember when I had my COVID injections, but I can find it out and they might show you through their device as well. But I would encourage you to get connected and use it through your clinical information systems. It, I'm sure, will bring lots of benefits to your practice. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kathy. Um, I'm just going to play a video. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to make me the presenter. <laughs> Which stars the wonderful Cecily. So I'll just go in there now.
Thank you very much uh, for showing uh, that video made probably almost a year ago and I think the first thing I would say is that I've learned a lot uh, about my health record over the last uh, over the last 12 months and I think that uh, probably use it even more and appreciate it enormously so from from my perspective every single letter gets uploaded and all I do is just tick the bottom of the letter there's a couple of little, little bits on the bottom of the letter and it says upload to my health record and I just tick it and, and I tell my staff that if I haven't ticked it could they please give me a nudge unless there is a particular reason why I wouldn't upload it. I um, have not chosen not to upload anyone's letters but I am also very careful about what information I put in letters and I am aware that patients can see that information. So that does, you know, that does uh, colour sometimes a little bit about, uh, about what I say. I think that specialist letters in there are fantastic. It is just so much easier when I can see, just open the My Health Record and I open it with every patient now. I did not open it with every patient nine months, 12 months ago, but I do now because I stumble across things that I did not have any understanding were there, that the patient didn't, didn't understand what was wrong with them. So the specialist letters are terrific and, and, and they are slowly increasing in number. From my perspective, the biggest disappointment is that there's no public hospital letters in my, in my area that are uh, uploaded to the My Health record. It goes the other way, and, uh, but it will be fantastic if Gospital Wild Hospital, my local ones, can start uploading uh, letters from staff specialists who work in, in, in the hospital system. Um, that would be that would be great and I think having my letters there from my point of view is really useful for the hospital and and the hospital now really have got the idea to have a look for my letters there and it saves those terrible times for me for finding patients having inappropriate uh, admissions to ICU inappropriate resuscitation when they've got a terminal malignancy um, that we've that I've discussed and documented what what level of care they are for and I say it's all documented in that letter you don't need to go in there having met the patient five minutes before and start asking at the end of life because it's all there and it's so readily available for emergency and the, and the hospitals so the, 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 I find that very useful. I do look at the GP shared health summary and I think Cathy mentioned it. One, if people have got an indefinite referral and um, I haven't been updated for, for many years, which clearly happens. And secondly, also I get a, a few referrals or many referrals that come from other specialists and it, they may have very little information about their other health issues. So I certainly use it in patients who've been referred from other specialists where that detail about the medicines, other health issues may not be as, as, as much as I would like. We did a, we did a project uh, last year on immunisation that we used a lot of information that was available from um, my health record. We looked at how much uptake there were was amongst immunocompromised patients for vaccines and compared that to the state average. And um, you know, that was a really nice little bit of audit that we did in our practice because I am pretty um, in, a bit of an enthusiast for having my immunocompromised patients vaccinated and having them have as many doses that, that are available. And so I wanted to see if what I was telling patients were actually translated to an improvement in, in vaccination uh, rates. And so we completed that using uh, my health record and the information that was available from the Australian Immunisation Register within that. I think they're imaging, the best is for the public hospital. There isn't a lot of, of the private imaging in there. There is some, but not a lot. And, and you know, I have access to IntelliViewer for, for many of them. So I do get imaging results from there, but I have to then log into IntelliViewer, whereas the My Health Record in Software for Specialists or Audit 4 that I use is just within that packy within the electronic medical record for that patient. So the same way I would click on 
a, a worksheet for the patient. I just click on the My Health Record and it opens it up. And I am biased, but I think that the presentation of My Health Record in software for specialists is lovely. It's very clean, it's very neat, very easy to find, and I think it looks better than the one that Cathy demonstrated. But that might be my personal personal preference. I think the uh, drugs are, are also very helpful and um, for compliance, I look at that, what patients are taking. I look at it for a whole range of different 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 things, what's being dispensed, um, and and a list of drugs that they're taking when that patient comes in without their medication list, a list from a GP that might have 20 drugs on it. The patient says they're taking five, they don't bring in their Webster pack with them or the, or the little card from the Webster pack and you're really struggling and, and in the old days I had to get my secretarial staff to ring the pharmacy and get a list of what was in the Webster pack. So those days are gone, days of chasing around about who people are seeing, um, that, that's much, so much easier. I just go into the, into the um, Medicare section and see which cardiologist has been paid. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get their letter if it's not on there, but at least you can see. And so it's much easier, my secretary, to just ring that cardiologist and ask for, for a copy of the letter. So there's lots of things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis with my health record. It is seamlessly integrated. It is not clunky. It works very well. It's, it's really easy. When I search for a document, I have a little tick in the don't show anything I've uploaded because I don't want to see my letters. I want to see everybody else's letters. So you can really just tidy it up and make the search fields really easy so that you get to where you want to be and, and what you want. And you can download and save the documents, so radiology that I might want to save, and I can save uh, certain documents that I want or other other letters from other specialists. So I think it's um, it's incredibly useful. It streamlines things. It makes it easier. I mean, as a haematologist, my patients present to the public hospital all the time. They've got complex diseases, and you know, my husband's a cardiologist, and he gets requests for letters much less frequently because it's kind of like I think I always say oh that's because cardiology is easy you know it's just plumbing whereas haematology people can't even remember sometimes exactly what diagnosis they've got so we get an enormous number of calls for copies of my letters and my staff have a look and see if the patient has a my health record and will say they have a my health record their letters are on my health record so my staff can't access the My Health Record, they don't have a login approval, so only the, only the practitioners in uh, my practice um, can access the My Health Record um, for it, but my staff can see if they have a My Health Record. I have convinced a few patients who haven't got a My Health Record to, to get one, and I'll often say, look, you know, you've been diagnosed with myeloma, it's really complicated, you're seeing a kidney specialist, you're seeing your heart specialist, you're seeing me, you're presenting to and from hospital all the time. This will be much easier if everybody has easy access to your information. So in that circumstance, it is uh, sometimes easier to convince uh, people to um, get a My Health record in that they can see that that information is really critical, that you can get it easy in the middle of the night. And I have to um, say, if there, I think there's quite a few people from, um, from Newcastle uh, listening in. And um, on the Central Coast, our public hospitals have an electronic medical record, which you don't have. And so uh, that makes this, um, that makes the My Health record incredibly important because you have to wait for those files and paper to come from the land of the files and paper over to ED or to where your patient is to find out what's going on and to be able to access specialist letters through my health record hours before you get any paper information from on those patients is incredibly important and really useful. And I can say that as the mother of one of the residents up in uh, John Hunter who says, oh my God, it's just so hard in ED when you don't have electronic medical records. So a big plug for, for John Hunter uh, specialist to you know, say it's really useful and really streamlines care. I know my um, haematology 
colleagues at Hunter Valley Haematology upload their letters because I see them when we share patients. So I see their see their letters. So um, I think I'm really you know keen to answer any issues people have. Oh, the the setup when Kathy mentioned it, I was trying to remember. God, what did I do? How did we set this up? And in fact, it was software for specialists who I use, but it would be the same, I'm sure, with Jeannie. They're really helpful, they know how to do it, they're really slick, they send you a list, this is what you need to do, Cecily, get this done, and, and a link about how to do it, or where to go, what, and, and it really happened very quickly. So it wasn't encumbersome, it wasn't difficult, it was very streamlined, and in fact, software for specialists had a little uh, training video, showed you how to use it, what, what, and, and an example from one of the endocrinologists who runs that business showed us with dummy, dummy, dummy files about how they use it, and it was really helpful, it was really easy, and has made uh, uptake of my health record in my practice uh, really good. And, and I, you know, I, I fear to say I'm turning 60 shortly, so I didn't grow up in the age of, of electronic anything. And uh, it really has been very easy, much, much, much better. My secretaries love it all because it really saves them on the phone trying to get things faxed over or, or, or sending other things elsewhere by fax. So very happy to answer any questions that anyone has about it. Um, but for me, lots of pluses. Awesome, thanks Cecily. Just um, while everyone is thinking of those questions and putting them in the um, question box, what I'll do is I will show my screen and I'm just going to give a really brief um, presentation on what else the PHN can offer to specialists in our region. Okay, so I'll just confirm that you can see my presentation. Yes, yeah, so I, I, now it's in presentation mode. All oh, good. Awesome. Um, so thank you, Kathy and Cecily, for those great presentations. I really enjoyed listening to them and I really enjoy listening to first-hand experience of my health record in a specialist setting. So my name is Hannah and I'm the Digital Health Project Lead here at the PHN. I work in the Digital Health team alongside my manager, Marilyn Dixon, who's joining us tonight, and um, Digital Health officers, Peter Mullen and Jacqueline Allison. So before we move on to any questions um, you have, um, like I mentioned, I'll just run you through some other support that the PHN can offer. I'll also make um, an extend an, a warm welcome to anyone else joining us from other PHN um, networks tonight. We did extend the invite to anyone um, who would like to join us. So welcome if you're outside our region. Um, I also wanted to just um, congratulate everyone in our region for a really great use of my health record we have over 157 specialists connected to my health record in our region which is amazing um, so your benefits your patients are benefiting in a number of ways that we've outlined tonight and I'll just note you know since April 2022 there's been over 17,000 specialist letters uploaded in our region and over 12,000 prescription records so these numbers speak for themselves and um, it's absolutely amazing and everyone should give themselves a pat on the back if you're contributing to that. Um, so the PHN doesn't just offer support for my health record. So here is a bit of a screenshot of what is in our Healthy Together Digital Care Toolbox, which is available on our website. So this is a change management toolbox um, that offers healthcare providers a range of resources, tools and techniques to support the implementation of digital change at different levels of digital health readiness. So the toolbox will assist healthcare organisations to recognise how digital health technologies are applied in practice to achieve greater efficiency in healthcare delivery and better health outcomes for your patients. So every practice is different. I'm not going to go into each of these topics tonight, but I did just want to highlight a couple. As mentioned, the My Health app um, has just been released. So you'll be seeing patients having access to their um, My Health record a lot easier. The other thing I wanted to mention is the cybersecurity. And um, Kathy mentioned the cybersecurity resources and the courses that are available through the agency. And I don't know if you've been watching the news lately, but there has been a lot of talk about cybersecurity attacks. So it's really important that everyone in your practice is up to date on that. 
So um, you'll receive a link to Healthy Together Digital Care Toolbox at the end of the presentation and in the slides. So um, please go on there and have a look around. I've also included some contact details. So on the left is for the agency, Australian Digital Healthcare Agency, as well as on the right is our team here at the PHN. So all of our details are there and please feel free to give any of us a call at any time. Finally, I just wanted to um, plug our Primary Care and Innovation Awards. So submissions are open. We host that, um, those awards every year just to celebrate all the amazing things that are going on in our region. So if you would like to put in a submission and you think you're doing some really awesome things in your practice, please go ahead and do that. Um, I've linked the award criteria um, in the slides as well. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to questions now. And we did have a couple of questions come through. And one is, do you have a commercial program to access my health record? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Catherine, do you mean, if you can put in some extra um, can, information or, or I speak? I can respond to that one. I, th I think that's to, to relates perhaps to whether you need to have a specific software product or whether you can access it in another way. And I, I did touch on that in my presentation, but there is the option to use what's called the National Provider Portal. Um, so that gives you access to view without having to have a commercial product, a software product um, to use the system. So that there is that option available. But I would have thought that most software products are either my health record compatible using really that most specialists use. So for me, it's a software for specialists is my billing so appointments yeah. and le electronic medical record all in one. So I just for my clinical module, it's it's a it's a little um, icon on the patient's medical front sheet on their summary, there's a little icon, my health record, and it goes straight into the individual patient that opens up their my health record. And, and it's very similar with Genie and with other uh, other products. So it's, it's, for me, it's integrated across the, the software that I use for, for everything, billing, accountant, and what I call accounting and billing appointments and clinical. Thanks. I can see that um, Catherine's also put another note in to say she's written her own software, so it's not compatible, which is where the um, the portal would come in handy, like you mentioned, Kathy. And you'll be able to view those um, that information in the patient's record. Oh gosh, writing your own software, that's really impressive. It's amazing. <laughs> well if, if you are that amazing and do you want to integrate your product with My Health Record, we do have a developer website as well. If you go to our website, which I had up on before, it's digitalhealth.gov.au, um, look for the software developer page and it will give you information about integrating if you're that way inclined. <laughs> amazing. Thank you, Kathy. Um, the next question we have is, do patients have access to everything in my health record, specialist letters, reports? And I believe we did touch on this and, and yes, they do have access um, to those things, but I'll let you both speak to that. Uh, Ms. Cecily, first, if, um, yes, they do. And so I think, um, in, in fact, to me, I, I probably am aware of it, that the patient will see it. I have always been a little bit careful about what I put in letters and um, some of my juniors will say that, you know, if they write a letter or something and they say, this is a lovely lady, I say, how do you know she's lovely? How would we know? You've seen her for an hour. So I, I don't make comments about my patients, whether they're lovely or obnoxious. Um, they're just a patient and it's not for me to judge. So I'm very careful about what I put in letters. Um, and, and because I know the patients can get access to them. But I think we all find that no matter what we say on the bottom of our letter and whether we're happy or not, our letters get given to patients from their GPs, from other specialists, from wherever. So I am a little bit careful about what I say and because um, I ask all my patients what street drugs they use and varying other things and I don't always put that in their letters, but it will be in my health record as to what, say, what recreational drugs and other things they use. But yes, everything I write, I am very aware that patients will 
have access to everything I say. You can always choose not to upload it to my health record, but I actually don't think that guarantees the patient won't see that, what you've written. And I yeah, believe I that's there a really is... good point, Cicely. I was just going to add to that in terms of uh, relating to the pathology reports and other results. Um, patients can see those, but uh, there was a lot of discussion initially about how quickly patients should be able to see that. And there actually is a seven day delay for patients on being able to see that information. So it's once the report's been finalised, it gets uploaded, if, it, if the lab's connected, they upload it to my health record in real time um, and it's sent back to the requester at the same time. Um, but when that happens, there is then a lock put on the patient's version um, so they can't actually open that for seven days with some exceptions because there's been some exceptions brought in around that seven day rule um, because of COVID. So people need to see if they've had a COVID result, they need that result as soon as possible. Um, and a few other things where people uh, are encouraged to self-manage. Um, so there's been some relaxation of that rule over the last 12 months um, to enable patients to do that self-management. So things like like um, RSV results, um, HbA1c and uh, INR reports will be uh, immediately visible and there will be probably others in the future but for most others there is that lock in place to give you as clinicians time to review those results and, and have a discussion with the patient if needed. I'm quite surprised how few patients, and, and it may reflect the fact that I'm, you know, haematologist, so I look after patients who are older, how few of my patients actually access their medical record themselves. You know, I'm sure it's a much younger uh, population who, who, who access their medical records in general. That's a great segue that into might change a bit with the yes. new app coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just going to say that. Keep in mind, but you know, I think patients find apps often. I have to be helping them with the Medicare Express app, saying that's where you certificate. This is, you know, how you use this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, Marilyn just put in a comment, you know, now patients have access to My Health app. They can see their medication and documents on their smartphone whenever and wherever they want to. So that might might change things. Um, that was in response to your sometimes. They have to install the app and actually link it all together. <laughs> it is, it is, they might not know, necessarily still be able to do that. Yes, they may still not be able to. One of mine was telling me the other day about, you know, they've got this phone so they could QR code in and COVID and it never ever once worked but their data was turned off and they never didn't understand. I said, no, well, you're not connected to anything. Your data's off. And she goes, no, no, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. I said, yes, but you're to your home Wi-Fi. When you leave home, it doesn't go with you. And, you know, like, like the, there are a lot of people who, who, you know, in their 80s who struggle with a smartphone. Probably some at my age too, but I probably do too. Awesome, thank you. So that's the that's all um, the questions we have, Catherine. I don't. I will reach out to you just to talk about your specific scenario um, tomorrow, and and we can have a discussion about that. Um, but unless there's any final questions, I think we're ready to wrap up. Thanks so much, everybody, um, for attending, and thank you for your time, Cecily, Kathy, and Hannah. Um, it was a very interesting presentation on some, sometimes a fairly dry subject. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, we have recorded this webinar and um, I'm presuming, Hannah, we can make it available in the education library on the website. Definitely, yes. And I've just seen another question Fantastic. come through, Catherine. Um, the name, it's My Health App. And if you search for My Health Gov in um, the App Store, you'll be able to find it. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> all right, thank you everyone uh, for coming and um, don't forget that you can um, get nearly all of our webinars are recorded and can be found on our website um, in the education tab and you'll see a section there called the education library and uh, you can pursue at your pleasure. All right, thank you everyone and have a nice evening. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, thanks, thanks everyone. Good night.